Yes. Okay. Is it on? Yes. No. It's on. Okay, you're confusing me. Check, check, check. Hello. 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 Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Okay. No. Let me just use the normal one. Should I just use the other one? Okay. Is it on now? It's on. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Okay. I'm just gonna use this one. I think I'll save more time. All right. There we go. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Choices. Wow. I see we still have remnants from AUP Academy. Praise God. Choices, choices, choices. Man, no, this is not life. You sound dead. Come on, let's try again. Choices, choices, choices. Choices, choices, choices. 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 Choices, choices, choices. Man, maybe tomorrow, huh? Uh, I'm not going to teach you anymore. But anyway, thank you for coming for the four days that we have been meeting. And as rightly as it has been said, we are here to choose life. We have been discussing so many messages throughout the week where we get to see what really are we choosing in our lives. Different situations and different characters in the Bible that were shown to have chosen either life or death. My, my pointer is not working. I think the, the memory stick is on the other laptop. Yes, okay, my pointer is not working, but we'll continue until it comes back. It's on the other laptop, yes. So we have been discussing different choices that have been made. Today we are going to look at the life of John the Baptist. And simply the title, oh, before I give you the title, the title is not Moses, yes will be Joseph. But as I, I had said this morning, that I have given you my contact, especially the AUP Academy, not to be your text mate, but if you need any prayers or you have any requests that, I, that you would like to share with me and you would like me to pray for, you could text me or email me at any time. And also I would remain behind after the program to pray once again with, with the people who want to rededicate, with the people who want to really decide life and publicly declare it and confirm it through even more united prayers. We have been looking throughout the week on different topics. This time I'm not going to go on them comprehensively because I've been given a few time to speak. Adam and Eve, we know that they were given a choice to make. Either to eat from the tree of life and all the tree in the garden or death to eat from the, the fruit of the tree of good and evil. And we know the choice that they had made. They chose to eat from the fruit of good and evil. And they chose death. But what did we decide to choose? Man, AUP Academy, you're dead again. What did, they de what did we decide to do? What did we decide to choose? What did we decide to choose? Second day, we looked at Friends of Destiny. We looked at the life of Dina. And Dina made a choice to go and see the daughters of the land. And we know that that led to the death of so many people as a result of the choice that Dina had made to associate herself with the daughters of the land of Shechem. And what did we choose? 
What did we choose? On the third day, or I think it was on the same day, no, no, it was on the third day, we looked in the morning at the life of Joseph. And simply as we read from Patriots and Prophet, it really said there that on the way to Egypt, Joseph decided, Joseph gave himself fully to the Lord. Joseph decided that the, the faith of his father would now become his faith. And therefore, nothing in Egypt could shake him. And Joseph chose life. And what did we choose? Life. What did we choose? The other time, just yesterday evening, we looked at my number one idol. It's not my no one idol, my number one idol. And we looked at the life of Aaron and the Israelites. Despite God's salvation in their life, despite God going to great extent to save them and bring them out of Egypt and bring them to a place where they can worship him no longer as slaves, they still wanted other gods. And they still wanted these gods to share the same seat with the God who actually delivered them. And they made a calf. And as a result of that, 3,000 people died that day. But what did we choose? Aye. What did we choose? Aye. This morning we looked at the Christian's focus and we looked at the life of David and Bathsheba. And we saw there that David was at the height of his power. He was in the middle of his reign. David had all the glories. He had won all the fights and he was a mighty warrior now. And in his mighty warriorship, that's not a word by the way, he started trusting in himself. He became relaxed. And as a result of that, as he was walking around one evening and he saw this beautiful lady, as we said, the temptation never look ugly. Temptation always look good. And we saw that despite several things happening to hinder him from going and sleeping with this lady, he still chose to sleep with Bathsheba. And as a result of that, as part of cover-up, he tried to kill. But in the end, I, I did not tell you, but the end of David's life was defined by this choice. You see, David ended up his life very sad. Even to the point that he was about to die, they were still fighting who was going to rule next. His sons were fighting one against another, all because of a simple decision of sleeping with a woman. All how destinies are shaped from one choice. But what did we decide to choose? Aye. What did we decide to choose? Aye. Today we're gonna to talk about the Christian's mission. It's a very simple message. Not so complicated. No, 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 I'm not gonna tell you so many things, but I want you to go with me and look at a life of this man. But before we do so, how many of you want to become doctors someday? Oh, how many of you are doctors already? Okay, none. All right, how many of you would like to become doctors someday? Yes, it's okay, yeah, all right. How many, how many of you would like to become, uh, what's the other one, businesswoman? Oh, man, you know this is not, okay. Men, people are so shy. Like, you're not courageous anymore? How many of you would like to become astronaut? An astronaut, anyone? Yes, wow, we have. And who wants to be a nurse? So they're already nurses, yeah? We have nurses here, okay? Anyone wants to be a nurse? Nobody? Okay. Who wants to be a pastor? I'm putting my hand up. All right, all right, I can just see like four. Okay, I can see Noel at the back, all right. And who wants to be a nutritionist? Anyone? Nobody? Okay, I can see someone. How about a teacher? Okay, that is great. And did I miss anyone? No, there is so many other things that we want to become. But I wanna ask you a question. Is your future in God's hands? 
Have you really determined that this is God's plan for your life, for you to become a doctor? And how you are going to use being a doctor? How you're going to use becoming a pastor? How you're going to use becoming a nurse, a pediatrician, a, a business woman, man, astronaut, or whatever, to glorify God and lift him up? Have you ever sat down and really chose that your life would be for his service? In the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11, God says it clearly. I know the plans that I have for you, or I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Let us pray. Our dear kind and heavenly Father, you know that me being here at the front does not make me any better than those who are going to hear this message. And you've just simply given me a message to, to, to impart to your children. I ask and pray that your Holy Spirit can fill me right now and also fill the hearts of the listeners. That whoever they are, they can stop and think, what really is my mission? I pray that you can be with us. Bless us and keep us. Help us to just focus for these few minutes before we partake of the Lord's Supper. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we're going to look at the life of John the Baptist. John the Baptist has a parallel birth. What do I mean? John the Baptist was born in the same similar time with somebody else. I was born in 1992. How many of you here are born in 1992? All right. So we have one person who's born in 1992. So please come. Come, come, come. Sorry, uh, I, I kind of caught you off guard. Yeah, you can come up, come up. So, and actually I know somebody from Philippine Meister Singer who's actually born on the exact same date as me. But I'm not going to call her up and embarrass her. So, we are both born in 1992. Imagine, we have been born in the same year. We have the similar opportunities, right? We have our own choices. Is it right? He has his choice and my choice. He could become one day maybe the president of the Philippines, right? <laughs> or the, the principal of a UP Academy. Or he could or I could become one day the president of my country. You see, we both we understand this is simple understanding that even though we are both born in a different places at different times, even if we're born in the same place, we all have our own choices, right? Right? We both have our own choices. We will live our own lives and we'll probably die not in the same bed, right? We'll die at different times. Thank you so much, teacher. That's it. I just wanted to illustrate to you that when you look at the life of John the Baptist and the life of Jesus Joseph, Jesus of Nazareth, he, they were born literally at the same time, six months apart. Six months apart. So they were edge mates, right? They're like your friends, your barcadas. They literally had their entire lives to choose the choices that they were going to do. You know, sometimes we see Jesus differently. We see him, maybe he was a bit older than everyone else. But actually, he was the same age as John the Baptist. And I want you to notice something. There is so many similarities between the life of Jesus and the life of John the Baptist. And when you look at it, 
John was born in a, pre in a prestigious family. In the book of Luke chapter 1, 5, it says that there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias and, and, the, cor and the course of Abia, or the, the son of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Number one, John the Baptist was a son of a priest. Now priests in those days were prestigious people. Not only that, but also the mother was from a priestly line. He was from Aaron. Aaron as we talked about yesterday. Not only that, but John also came from a righteous family. In fact, when you read Luke chapter 1 verse 6, it says, And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. John was a miraculous child. You see, in Luke chapter 1 verse 7, it says that they had no child because number one, Elizabeth was barren. And number two, they were just too old. It says that and they were both now well stricken in years. So the birth of John had to be a miracle birth. He was destined for greatness. It says in Luke chapter 1 verses 15, For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. And then he goes on to the things that he was not supposed to do. Like, and he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And we see that his birth was known everywhere. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. You know, Jesus was also born, not in a prestigious family, but in a poor family. You know, he was born in a righteous family. He also was a miraculous birth because the, the, the mother was a virgin. And also the shepherd heralded the message that Jesus was born everywhere. And so as we see, we have two characters. Both of them destined for greatness. Both of them growing up as young babies. And what did John choose? You see, in John's choice, he was told that he was destined for greatness. But this destined for greatness was to prepare the way for the Lord. Are you with me? And preparing the way of the Lord meant that he would not leave his own dreams. Are you with me? He would not, maybe he, he wanted to be a fisherman someday. Maybe he wanted to be a, a priest as well. Maybe he wanted to be part of the, the Pharisees or the Sadducees. But John had to put this aside. John had to decide whether he really was going to prepare the way for the Lord. Are you with me? Jesus never forces anyone to do what they don't want to do. And so it was up to John's choice. To prepare the way for the Lord. It was up to John's choice to submit that, you know what, I am going to put self aside and I am going to choose to live for God. I can imagine John growing up. Can you imagine him? Just like, just like me and, and my brother who came up, we are both growing up, but I am being told by my parents, by the way, you are going to be preparing the way for the other. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a young boy being told, um, really, you don't have to be a fisherman. No, no, no. You don't have to be a Sadducee or a Pharisee. You are just going to prepare the way for Jesus. Can you imagine? 
And as he grows up, he comes to a stage where he himself has to choose whether he is really going to prepare the way or he is not going to do so. And what did John choose? He chose to prepare the way for Jesus. Amen. It says in Luke chapter 3 verse 16, John answered saying to them all, they were looking to him, they were asking him, are you a prophet? You know, John could have easily said, yeah, yeah, how did you guess? You know, sometimes we like to like make ourselves better, as I said before, right? You know, when somebody asks you, you know, when somebody asks you, I remember walking in the streets of Manila uh, when we're doing literature evangelism with my friends, and then they're asking you, uh, you know, I don't know why, but they think all Africans play basketball. I don't know why. And so they're asking you, go, hey, Joe, Joe, come, shoot three-pointer. And I'm like, nah, I'm tired. You know, you don't want to shoot it because you know you're not going to get it in. But you just want to make yourself look better. You know, it's like, oh, Kobe, Kobe. You're like, yeah, yeah, I play basketball too. You know, you love to make yourself better. And this could have been the same thing that happened in John's life. When they were asking him, are you Elias? Are you Elijah the prophet? Are you Jesus? Are you the Messiah? What did John reply? He, he said, no, no. And in fact, he says, Jesus, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, that the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Can you imagine when people are gathering around John, he is gaining fame, but yet he's telling them, no, 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 don't look at me. Look at Jesus. Somebody else is coming. In fact, he was so dedicated to his mission. When you look at John 1 verses 28 to 37, you find there a very interesting story. You know, John actually became very famous. In the beginning of John's ministry, he was so famous. Everybody was coming to him and he was baptizing so many people. But as he was baptizing so many people, Jesus came. It was the time now for Jesus' ministry to begin. And now as Jesus is walking down into the water, John could have just acted like he does not know who Jesus was and he could have continued with his greatness. But what does he say as soon as he sees Jesus? It says there in John 1 verses 28, that the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Not only there, but few verses afterwards. The next day, people maybe did not get it. He says it again. Behold the Lamb of God. And now you see, in this story, two of John's disciples actually leave John to follow Jesus. It's the first time that we see that now John's disciple are starting to leave him to follow Jesus. Can you imagine how he felt? You know, some, some of us don't like to lose popularity. When some people gain more friends than us, we feel kind of bad. But for John, he was happy that they were leaving. And you know, it was not only two. You know, sometimes, okay, two friends leave me, that's all right. It's all right, I can gain more friends, right? But now look at the next scene. In John chapter 3 verses 22 and 23. Now another interesting situation. The first time the disciples simply left John. But John was still baptizing. Are you with me? John was still famous. But now this time, this is what is recorded. And these things came. Jesus and his disciple and after these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea and there he tarried with them and baptized them. And John also was baptizing in Enon near Salem because there was much water there and they came and were baptized. What is happening here? Two baptisms. Are you, can you notice it? Jesus and his disciples are baptizing on this side. John are baptizing on the other side. Now Jesus is no longer just stealing two of it, two of John's disciples.
disciple, Jesus is now baptizing his own disciples. Are you with me? Can you imagine how John felt? But John did not feel bad. He was actually happy about this. But you can imagine what the disciples said. And the disciples in John 3 verses 26, it says, And they came to John and said, Rabbi, Rabbi means teacher, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom you bear, bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all men are coming to him. Rabbi, Rabbi, imagine, like imagine a, a, a prince, prince is preaching in Finster, and all your friends are leaving your sermon and attending prince's sermon. Can you imagine? Can you imagine now the disciples are like, what is going on? This Jesus is gaining more popularity than John the Baptist. John is actually losing popularity. Remember, they're equal ages. Same age. Both same birth. Miraculous birth. Both were destined for greatness. This defines John's life. What did he respond? After a while of responding, talking about how he is there to, to prepare the way for the bridegrooms. He is like the bridegroom's man and he is not the bride, he, bridegroom himself. And he says this statement, he must increase, but I must decrease. Can you imagine? Can you imagine John coming to the point of saying, no, my greatness is in Jesus being glorified. Can you imagine the disciples? They're like, huh? So we're gonna lose all our, our friends. They're all gonna go to Jesus. And this, from this on, we hear only that John was taken to prison. And even in prison, we find a shameful death. A death that is not usually talked about so much, but it's literally parallel to Jesus' death. Because he also was killed by Herod. It says, and the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it be given to her, and he sent and beheaded John in the prison. Can you imagine death? John the Baptist. I think this side doesn't like much. John the Baptist. greatness. John the Baptist, destined for greatness, dies because of a girl dancing. Huh? This guy was destined for greatness? He dies because a girl danced and for his head. What a shameful death to a great preacher. And I'd like to tell you how tough it got for John. We don't understand how tough it got for John. Look, there was one time he's in prison and he's just hearing about Jesus getting famous. He's hearing about Jesus, Jesus healing the sick, making the lame to walk, causing the blind to see. He's hearing about Jesus freeing Lazarus from the holds of death. And he's saying, uh, what about me? Didn't I dedicate my entire life for him? How come he is not freeing me? And notice this point. He got so low that he went to ask Jesus this question. Even though all his life he had been told that you are preparing the way for Jesus. All his life he knew that this was the love of God. All his life he knew that his life and he made the decision. I am choosing today to live for Jesus. He comes to a point of such despair that he asked this question. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Are thou he that 
should come? Or do we look for another? Do we look for another Messiah? Do we look for another Jesus? It got so low that even John was doubting if he lived his entire life for this Jesus and, 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 and is it really him? Maybe some of us will live lives like this. You know, some of us think, man, living a Christian life, can I really leave that wage of a surgeon that I'm getting paid in Manila doctors and, and serve in Mumsy less than that, or even serve in AUP? Can I really work as a missionary and serve God all my life while all my friends will be earning millions and millions of pesos? You come to a point and, and you give your entire life. You give your entire life to Jesus. And then at the end you're saying, really? Did I really live my life? Some of us will get here. But I'm telling you, when you choose to live for God, when you choose that he should be the one glorified, though you might not see the work that you have done, but in heaven you have become the greatest. Are you with me? You have become the greatest. Look what Jesus responds. Jesus responds to the disciples, please go and tell them of the works that you see. The blind walk, the lame, no, no the blind don't walk. The blind see, the lame walk, and, 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 and the dead people rise. Go and, go, go, go and tell him. I believe John repented. But notice what Jesus says next. And this is what I want to tell you, young people. When you choose to live for God, Jesus then says, Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of the woman, there has not reason a greater than John the Baptist. Because he decided to dedicate his life completely, completely for God. He said, I'm not going to live for myself. Even though he was the same age. He was the summa cum laude, the same summa cum laude like Jesus. Even though he could have attained greatness, he decided that his greatness would be in the greatness of Jesus. Amen? Now I want to ask you today. Is you being a doctor, is you wanting to become a nurse, you wanting to become a pastor, you wanting to become an accountant, a businessman, a businesswoman, an astronaut, whatever it be, is it to glorify God, is it to lift him up or to lift yourself up? Because you know, beloved, Though it looks like you're choosing the wrong side, you're choosing life eternal. When you decide that, Lord, you have control of me, wherever you lead me, I will go. When you say, Lord, even if I, I become a surgeon, Lord, even if I become a great teacher, Lord, even if I become a great pastor, my point is not for me to be great, but for you to be great. You have chosen life eternal. God has said again in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know the plans that I have for you. I know, I know why I want you to be an astronaut. I know why I want you to be a doctor. I know why I want you to be a pastor or whatever it be that you're choosing. I know why. Because I want my name to be lifted up. God wants you to make that choice that I am not going to live for myself, but I'm going to live for God. This is choosing life eternal. Have you made that choice? Or do you still want to gain the riches of this world? And be great in this world, but yet the least in heaven. John chapter 12, 
verses 32 says, and I, Jesus says, and I, if you lift me up, you know, he was saying this concerning himself, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to me. You see, if you decide that you are going to lift up Jesus in your life, you are going to bring life to other people. Are you with me? Choices. Life. Choices. Life. When you choose that you are going to lift up Jesus, when you choose that I am going to go down, no, 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 it ain't about me, but it's all about my Savior, then you are going to bring life to other people. Jesus wants you. He wants you completely. He doesn't want part of you. He doesn't want that, okay, I'm going to be going to church on Sabbath day, but the rest of the days are going to be my days of earning. Jesus wants you to completely give yourself to him. Because then you will choose life eternal. Just like Joseph. Joseph did not understand. Joseph did not understand why, he, why, why, how come? I, I thought I had a great dreams. I thought I was going to, I thought I was going to, 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 to be a king someday. I thought I was going to be a ruler someday. He thought this, but how come now I'm in shackles? How come now I am about to die? How come I'm alone? But remember what he did. Remember what he did. He said, no, 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 I'm going to take my faith of my father I'm going to believe Jesus I'm going to stand up for Jesus I'm going to dedicate my life to Jesus wherever I go even if there is idolatry in the house of Pharaoh I'm going to stand up for Jesus even if a woman would touch me I'm going to stand up for Jesus and say no even if I cast into prison and no longer I have no money even if I don't get that Sabbath job even if I never get to be the greatest surgeon even even if I never get to be in the magazine, even if I never get all the friends in the world, popularity and people having pictures on the wall of me, Lord, I am going to stand up to lift your name, for you know better than I. I would like to ask, what is your decision today? I'd like to call for an appeal before we pray, and I ask the Philippine Mesa singers to come up. If there is somebody today who would like to say, Lord, I want to give my life in your hands. I want to choose life today. Remember the four things that we're talking about. I want to rededicate my life because today I want my future to be in you. I want you to be in control of everything. If there is somebody who wants to say, Lord, I want to study the Bible more. I want to learn more about Bible studies. If there is somebody who wants to say, I would like to be baptized, whether it be tomorrow, whether it be next week, as soon as possible, I would like you to come up as this song is sung.
Is there anyone? Anyone who would like to come up and make public declaration? We pray. Let us pray. Our dear, kind, mighty, and heavenly Father, as the song says, you know better than I. I pray that we have understood that greatness comes from lifting you up. Our greatness does not come from fulfilling our own dreams and desire. Our greatness does not come from who is better than the other. Our greatness does not come for who will have more followers, neither who will have more Facebook friends. But our greatness comes from lifting you up and giving life to other men through our lives, through our career, and through our choices. I pray that if there is somebody there who felt shy to come up, but they still made this decision in their heart that you can be with them. I pray that you can help us dedicate our lives today, saying, I choose life in Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Because I am doing that today, Lord. I want to choose you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.